fellow coffee botherers. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing, setting up and reviewing the DeLonghi Magnifica ESAMP 4200 Bean to Cup coffee machine. Just to say before I start that this is a review of a Bean to Cup coffee machine, also known as automatic or super automatic coffee machines. You'll have noticed if you've watched a few of my videos that I talk about both types of espresso machines, traditional and bean to cup, but they are very different types of machines for very different types of users. So if you're currently looking at traditional machines, such as the Gaggia Classic, Sage or Breville Bambino Plus, Barista Pro, Ranchilio Silvia, Sage or Breville Dual Boiler and so on, please don't let videos like this confuse you. You don't need to be adding bean to cup coffee machines like this to your shortlist if you're shopping for a traditional machine as they're very different categories of machine. I'm saying this because I do get some comments and emails when I've reviewed bean to cup machines from people asking how they compare to the traditional machines they were considering. So I just want to make sure everyone is aware that bean to cup or automatic coffee machines occupy a very different category, category of coffee machine compared to traditional espresso machines. For more on the types of coffee machines, by the way, see this video. So let's get on with it. Nice little diagram showing you step by step what to do when you get it out. Manuals and stuff. The scaling stuff. That is the brewing unit, by the way. That's where everything happens. That is where the coffee is dosed into, tamped, and hot water is pumped through it to produce the espresso. So I'll talk about that in more detail in a bit. The drip tray. Take that out, that's a drag drawer, put that there. Push that in. All unboxed, so now let's get it set up. So I'm going to read the manual now as if I am a person using this for the very first time to tell you what to expect. I have used this before, but it was ages ago, to be fair. So I don't quite remember, but the roll fairly similar when it comes to the setup. Sure. Okay, using the appliance for the first time, it says coffee has been used to factory test the appliance and is therefore completely normal for there to be traces of coffee in the mill. You know, they say that quite often, but I've never found coffee in the grinder. I think that is just to cover themselves. First of all, we need to remove the water tank and fill it with water. Obviously, if you fill the water tank with milk, you're an idiot. We'll give that a rinse and then fill it. Water tank full and in. It says to turn the cappuccino maker outwards, it means the wand, the Panarello wand. Turn it outwards and place a container with a minimum capacity of 100 mil, so it can be a small container underneath. Plug it in, turn it on. And then the lights will flash simultaneously and together at the same time. After the lights flash, turn the steam knob half a turn anti-clockwise as far as it will go. So like that. Yeah, that was my wrist. What will be delivered from the wand, as I just said, and then wait for delivery of hot water to stop automatically. The lights 
and the steam light will flash to indicate you must close the steam tap and then close the steam tap. Let's do that. So turn it on. Flash in. Do that. That's it. Turn that off. Why it turns itself up like that. So next, I'm just gonna make four or five shots of espresso and chuck them in the sink. Okay, so I've pulled a few shots of espresso with it. Got the brewing unit calibrated. It seems to seems to settle down now, seems to know what it's doing. So let's make coffee. I'm gonna start off by making a single espresso and actually drinking it this time. I've got scales, well not just scales but the Akaya Luna, so very expensive, very precise brew scales here and I will do a review on these very soon by the way but I'm using these I want to get a rough idea of what kind of ratio I'm getting depending on where we're at here because it's a little bit difficult to know what dose you're getting and how much coffee you're going to get with these settings so I just want to give you a rough idea with the settings I've got here so smallest volume strongest or biggest dose. So this is your dose. This is how much coffee is going to be ground. This is the volume of espresso. So we want to just see what we get them very minimum on a single shot at the very maximum. Now in terms of coffee, it's difficult to know without drying the pucks out. Off camera I've weighed the pucks. I've taken the dreg drawer out and weighed them and then worked out roughly how much liquid is going to be in them and worked it back to roughly how much it's going to grind and I think with a single shot it's grinding about 10 grams we're getting just over 20 grams wet and it should be roughly half the weight if it was dried out if it was just coffee with no water retained in it so I'm going to go for about 10 I think it's about 10 grams but let's see So we've got 15.5 grams at the very lowest, which is a shame. I was hoping we'd get 20 grams because then it'd be really simple. You'd be doing a roughly one to two extraction from 10 grams ground with a single shot to 20 grams out. So 15.5 and it's all right. It's a little bit cool. Actually, that shot. I'm going to show you in a minute how to change the brew temperature. So forget that for now. I'm just going to turn it up to about five mil away from the very lowest setting. This is something I'll talk about after. I find the fact that this machine doesn't have reference. It's got one bean there, but and it's got one cup there. But it really, it's very difficult to know what you're doing. There's no. There's, I think there should be little dials here, little reference points. So you know what you're pointing to. So I'm just gonna, gonna point it at the core. Same again, single shot, maximum strength. And we're just pointing the dial directly at this cup here. more like it so that's 19 point yeah 19.5 so if you turn it to sort of just pointing at the top of the cup hopefully you can see the dial is just pointing at the cup and we're getting just under 20 grams 
And it doesn't taste bad, actually. I'm using decent, freshly roasted coffee beans, obviously. So I wouldn't expect it to taste awful because it is decent coffee, but that's not bad at all. But I'm just going to make the grind finer. So I'm going to turn the grind as it's grinding. I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise down to uh, three. It's come factory preset at five, six, five, is it? So I'm going to turn it down to about three while it's grinding. This time I'm going to press the double shot button. Oh, forgot I wanted to change the grind. So we've got about, got about double the amount, got 40 grams, so roughly double, just over, because it was just below 20. And it looks pretty good. And it tastes okay, but it's weaker. The reason it's weaker, and I've done a bit of experimenting off camera just before I started doing this, just before I started making the coffees, just after unboxing. And the reason it's weaker, and I kind of knew this already because I've done the same test with the uh, Magnifica S and the S Smart. And, you know, I'm aware of this already, but I wanted to just test it and make sure. And a double shot is producing double the volume, as you can see but it's not grinding double the coffee. And you can tell that based on how long it takes to grind, but not only that, when you weigh the uh, shot as I've done, when you weigh the um, puck, the difference was about, it equates to about two grams. So roughly 10 grams, I'm, only, I'm doing this roughly because I've not dried the pucks out. But working out roughly, it's about 10 grams for a single shot and about 12 grams for a double shot. So you can't really use a double shot. For, I mean, you can if, if you if you get this set up how you like it for a double shot and you like the taste of it, then great. And that is okay. But it just slightly, you know, slightly perplexes me that some manufacturers, including DeLonghi, don't think that a double shot should be double the volume made with double the coffee. Instead, it's double the volume made with two grams of roughly more coffee, which is slightly weird. In terms of temperature, that is perfect. It's quite hot, it's quite a hot shot, but we'll show you in a minute how to change the brew temperature. The brew temperature, the brew temperature, put my teeth back in. I see people talking about that as a way to make your coffee hotter. And yeah, obviously it will have that effect, but really, the brew temperature that I'm going to show you how to change is about dialing in. It's about getting a better taste from the coffee. Roughly speaking, if you're using darker roasted coffee beans, you want to go towards the cooler setting. If, you want to, if you're if you using lighter roasted beans, you want to go hotter. But obviously, it will have the effect of making your shots hotter as well. So you can use it that way, as long as it's not detrimental to the taste for your palate. So if you put it on hottest because you want a really hot coffee but you don't like the taste of it, then obviously you need to address that. So turn the machine off and then press and hold the single shot button. You can see these lights come on. And this is telling you what the current temperature setting is. So every time you press a double shot button, it will toggle through. So we're on two or four, three or four, four and four. One, two, three, four. So if we're not on the hottest setting, leave it at that. We're on the coolest setting, leave it at that. And I'm currently on the second setting. And then to set it like that to Go back to use it, but set it at what you've put it to here, just press the single shot button. Next, I'm gonna make a cappuccino using the Panarello 
wand. So Panarello wands are this sheath thing here that fits over the steam pipe and therefore making more bubbly, sort of thicker, stiffer foam for more old school cappuccino. They're dead easy to use. So I'll show you how to do that, but I just realise jug's over there, so I need to go and get it. For this, I'm going to use a single shot. I'm going to leave it set as it is. I'm going to pull a single shot and then I'm going to steam the milk using the Panarello steam wand. Press the steam button. Steam button's flashing. Makes that noise and then the steam light comes on solid. If you turn the steam on, see a little bit of water comes out first, but then you're ready to steam. So just put it into your milk. And there's not a great deal of instruction here, it's just stick it in, leave it until the milk's hot enough and take it out. The Panarello does it all for you, so you can't really do much, you can't really control the texture much, it's all done in the uh, Panarello. Obviously you can use a thermometer if you so wish. I'm just used to feeling the temperature of the jug and knowing when it's hot enough. Get in there. Yeah, that will do I think. Steam off. Wipe your wand. Or pull it off as I've just done. This, just pulled the Panarello off. This is a steam pipe. And we're gonna use this in a minute as a steam wand. This is quite thick, quite big bubbles. Not going to do a great job with that out. With that's a bit stiff. But as cappuccinos go, a lot of people will be quite happy with that. Let's taste it. Yep, yeah, it's all right. I'd like it stronger because I make everything with double shots and I made that with a single shot. So it's a bit on the weak side for me, but it's not offensive. So that's cappuccino, dead easy. Slap milk in your jug, slap the jug on there, press the steam button, turn it on, stop when it gets hot enough, and then make sure you press the steam button. I've seen some people, by the way, complaining. If you see these two lights still flickering, still flashing, that's telling you that you can't pull another shot yet because it's still cooling itself down. So some people are complaining that it takes ages to be able to pull another shot. But all you do for that is just, with the steam off, just open up the steam to get hot water. Hot water will come out. And as you can see straight away, it's cooled it down to brew temperature, to espresso brew temperature. So if you're pulling another shot, just make sure you've turned the steam off and then open the steam up, dispense water through the wand and then you'll see it goes straight back to brew temperature. Next, I am going to make a flat light. I'm going to make a flat light by taking the Panarello off and using the wand as a pro steam wand. For a flat light, I'm going to pull a double shot.
So we've got the espresso. Now, steam the milk, pull this off. And we're going to use this as a steam wand. So if you've never done this before, there's a knack to it. And I'm not going to do a full tutorial here, but really, really quickly, you just want the tip of this to be just enough into the milk so you get like a t -t 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 ripping paper sound, sort of hissing sound to begin with. And this is the tricky bit until you've stretched it enough, but knowing whether you've stretched it enough takes a little bit of time and it's different, it's different on different machines. So I've not used this machine for yonks, so I've got no idea. I'm just going to keep an eye on the milk and see when I think it's stretched enough. And then I'm going to stop that ripping paper sound by just lifting the jug up slightly. So I'm putting the jug, or putting the tip, putting the wand into the jug, just into the surface, and I've got the jug tilted slightly, and I'm stretching it at first, and then when I think I've stretched it enough, I'm just lifting the jug up. I'd recommend Lance Hedrick's milk steaming and latte art tutorials, and click up here somewhere and I'll put a link there to Lance's videos but obviously only watch that after you finish watching this. Purge the wand a bit. You saw just a little bit of water came out there which is why we purge it because you don't want water in your milk really. Not the end of the world but you don't really want it. So start. Can you hear that slight ripping? down, intermittent. I think that's enough, so I'm lifting the jug up now. I might have overstretched it, not sure. Soon find out. I'm just carrying going until I think it's hot enough. That seems about right. Steam off. Not up to Lance Hedrick's standards, obviously, but that tastes pretty good. So, flat white, cappuccino. Last but not least, I'm going to make an Americano. You can see it's still cooling down, so if I just do that, sorted. Americano to your taste, water and espresso. So there's two ways you can do this. I do usually say I prefer the hot water in first and then the espresso second because you get more crema. But actually, thinking of it logically, if you pull the espresso first and then put the hot water in, you can put some hot water in, taste it, and then put more hot water in. It's easier doing it that way to find out what's best for you in terms of taste than it is to do it the other way around, if you know what I mean. Put the hot water in first and then the espresso and finally you need more espresso because it's too weak. So let's do it that way. So again, I'm gonna pull a double shot because I like strong Americano. Water like that. And then, as I've said, the beauty of doing it that way is you can just stop it, 
taste it and think now nah, I need a bit more water and so on. That's all right. Nice and hot, I'll give it that, and it doesn't taste bad at all. There we go. So there you go, you've watched me using the DeLonghi ESAM 4200, and you're probably wondering what I think of it. In short, I think it's one of the best options for a bean-to-cup coffee machine at this price point, about £350 at the moment. It's a sturdy, robust little unit. I know many people who've had one of these for several years without any issues. It's very much a tried and tested machine. Just look at the massive number of Amazon reviews it's racked up since it started selling on Amazon about 15 years ago. There are no fuss, compact and inexpensive beans cup coffee machine capable of just about as good an espresso as you're going to get from any domestic beans cup coffee machine, in my humble opinion. They make hot espresso. You can adjust the brew temperature as you saw and you have complete control over the milk texture and temperature so you're not going to have the issue with this machine it's a fairly common complaint with bean to cup coffee machines usually with more expensive one touch machines with milk carafes about the coffee's been too cold in particular the milk has been too cold just to explain what i mean about the espresso quality comment it's the grinder and the brewing unit, which are responsible for the espresso quality. And when you pay more money for bean to cup coffee machines, you're usually getting the same or very similar in terms of the grinder and the brewing unit. So you're not usually paying for improved espresso quality. This is the same with most brands. If you buy the Gaja Brera, for example, the entry level side of things, or the Gaja Cadorna Prestige for about double the price, there'll be no difference in the brewing unit or the grinder. It's the more modern features you're paying for, including the four personalized user profiles on that machine. So just remember that when you're looking at any brand of beans cup coffee machine, if you're looking higher up the range in terms of price, just make sure you're paying more for features you're actually gonna use because some people think they're getting better coffee. They just assume they're gonna get better coffee the more they spend, but that isn't necessarily the case. It has a front accessed water tank, which is worth keeping in mind if you're wanting to tuck your coffee machine under kitchen wall cupboards. Many coffee machines have top access tanks, but this machine, as with the Gaja Brera, have front access tanks. Keep in mind though, you'll need some space over the top of the machine to load beans into the hopper, obviously. It has a bypass chute for ground coffee, which simply means you can bypass the grinder and put ground coffee directly into the brewing unit. And as I've said in previous videos, while this is often given as a solution for decaf coffee, I don't agree with a bypass chute as a solution for decaf. In my humble opinion, what the bypass chute is good for is having a standalone grinder and then being able to dial in to a certain degree and to create better espresso via bean to cup machines than you can with the integrated grinder. So if you grab yourself a grinder and any of the grinders I talk about in this video, which range from about 50 to 100 quid, will be better than the integrated grinder in most domestic bean to cup coffee machines like this. Or if you want to increase results even more, something like the Sage Smart Grinder Pro or one of the Eureka Minion grinders will take you even closer to perfect espresso with a bean to cup coffee machine via a grinder bypass chute. Then your solution for decaf can be to keep whole bean decaf stored in an airtight container and grind fresh and then dose via the bypass chute using decent mountain water processed decaf whole beans like my amazing Colombian mountain water processed coffee beans from seaworks.co.uk shameless plug and use a discount code YT25 for 25% off your first order. Using a standalone grinder with a beans cup coffee machine is a great solution for anyone who's forced to go down the beans cup machine route due to the other people in the home not wanting to go down the home barista rabbit hole. This is something I'm asked very often in the emails I get from readers and viewers. I want to dial in and produce better quality espresso, but my other half, often referred to as the boss, just wants to press a button. And my usual answer to this question is if the budget doesn't stretch to the Sage Oracle or to invest in, in a bean to cup machine for the boss and a home barista set up for you, then a bean to cup machine with a standalone grinder is possibly the best halfway house. The reason for this is that the grinder is one of the main limitations of bean to cup machines when it comes to espresso quality. 
The burrs aren't usually great. The adjustment is usually extremely limited, but for most normal coffee drinkers, the results are good enough when the amazing convenience of these machines are weighed in. But if you're not a normal coffee drinker and you want to improve the quality of your espresso as much as you possibly can, then having a grinder will enable you to produce slightly better shots of espresso. A standalone grinder, that is. It doesn't give you the complete control that using a traditional machine gives. The brewing unit still has control over the shot. You still can't adjust the tamp. You can't do put prep, but you can improve the quality of the grinding. And you can much more finely adjust the grind depending on which grinder you go for, obviously. When it comes to milk, as you saw, it's capable of cappuccino foam via the Panarello wand or fairly decent textured milk for latte art by removing the Panarello and using a steam pipe as a steam wand. The negatives, for me, the only slight negatives are the lack of references on the dose dial and the volume dial. The dose dial, often referred to as a strength dial, determines how much coffee is ground and dosed into the basket, and there's no way of knowing where to set it to, to get a certain dose, as you saw. With the Gaja machines, for example, they have individual bean settings, and each bean represents a number of grams from 7 to 11 grams. It's not a huge deal, though. I just have it set to the max, in terms of dose, and if you find your coffee too strong, just adjust it slightly until you're happy with it. The only issue then is if someone comes along and messes with the dials, there's no specific points of reference to put it back to. The other thing I'm not a big fan of with the Long Geek Beans Cup coffee machines I've tried, including the Magnifica S and the S Smart, and click here for the video I've done on the Magnifica S. I've not done one on the S Smart yet, but I will do it soon. Is that there's no real double shot button, as you saw earlier. The double shot button only doses a couple of grams more coffee into the basket than single, but it gives you double the volume of coffee. So if you want a true double shot, you need to dispense two single shots, one after the other. This is one of the things I think Gaja really nailed when it came to creating their beans a cup range. All of their machines have Bean settings, which deliver espresso made with a specific weight of coffee, for instance, the Brera, the three bean setting, doses 11 grams of coffee. And then with the Gaja machines also, the same is true of the Jura and I think all of the Melita models, but I might be wrong. When you select a double shot, which you do on the Brera by pressing the single espresso button twice, it will actually grind the set amount for a single, pull the shot, this set volume and then it'll do the same it'll just do that twice so you do actually get double the espresso made from double the weight of ground coffee but if you're more than happy just playing with the settings until you find what works for you and then leaving it at that and keep in mind that you can obviously make a true double shot by pressing the shot button and then pressing it a second time when it's finished with the first shot then these probably aren't going to be things that would bother you all that much. So overall, if you're looking for an inexpensive bean to cup or automatic coffee machine, and you want something small, robust, reliable, and you're not too fussed about bells and whistles, and you're not too bothered about the finesse, aesthetics, and slightly quieter operation, you might get from investing a bit more, then I don't think you can go far wrong than the ESAM 4200. Other machines you might want to look at though, at a similar price point, are the newer DeLonghi Magnifica S and also the newer Magnifica S Smart, which is basically the same as the S, but has the clever Panarello one that the Dedica EC685 has, that I think is possibly the best Panarello steam one on the market. The only one that's really capable of anything close to micro foam, although that doesn't really matter as you can just slip the Panarello wand off as you saw and just use the steam pipe as a steam wand. I will be doing more videos on this machine soon, including a side-by-side -side comparison with the Magnifica S. So if there's any specific videos you'd like to see with this machine or any other specific machines you'd like to see a comparison with, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've liked this video, then why not click here to watch another one? Also, please click the like button. Thanks, it makes the YouTube fairies smile. And if you ever get like a strange sensation, like a moth or something flying past your ear, that is a YouTube fairy fluttering its wings at you to remind you to click the like button. And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited coffee botherer, also known as Patreon supporter. Just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog Tatty bye.